Hello again, it's Debbie from acrylicpouring.com. I'm back today to try something new. So who knows whether this is going to be um, uh, successful, but no doubt it will be fun. So I'm going to try a double dirty pour. So I'm going to do two dirty pours and then pour them down on opposite sides of a canvas. So my first side is going to try and represent um, the land, um, the earth, the, the sand. So I'm going to have yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and just a touch of orange and then on the other side I'm going to try and represent the sea so I've got a cobalt blue a very dark ultramarine blue a nice teal metallic here and then some white and I'm going to try and separate them with a line of white too to represent the foam um, at the beach where um, the, the sand and the water are meeting. So I'm going to mix up all of my colours and then we'll pour the two cups and then we'll pour the canvas. So my paints are all mixed and looking gorgeous and I've got my two little cups here for my dirty pour. I think I'm going to, well I'm right handed so let's work on this side first. This is going to be my ocean side so I want it to be blue mostly the lighter blues, not too much of the dark and some of the white. So, so we're going to do a dirty pour. Start off by lining my cup with the white. A little bit of the blue. Don't really know how much to add, we'll see. It's the first time doing a, um, a double dirty pour as well, so I'm not entirely sure. Let's go with lots of this nice metallic one. I'm not entirely sure how much paint I will need. Hopefully I won't end up with too few because if I have not enough paint then I'll have to try and make it up. Okay, so should we say that that's like three quarters of a cup? Is that probably enough to do half my canvas? Let's hope so. Okay, so those are my ocean colours. Let's do my beachy type colours. I want that mostly to be the yellow ochre for the sand. Some white. A little bit of brown. I'm just going to spoon that in. I'm going to dribble it around, but hopefully it's not too concentrated in one place. And a little dash of the orange, but again, not too much. Now, a bit more white in there. So that's nowhere near as much as that one, so I probably need some more paints. In which case, let's go with all of my yellow ochre. Better to have too much than not enough, eh? Let's put all of that in there. A bit more of my brown. And just a tiny dash of the orange and then some more white. Okay, so now I've got lots of each. Try and keep things clean when I go. Oh, I've got white everywhere. Okay, so if I bring my, um, start clearing some of these paints out of the way, I'll bring the canvas over and we'll start with the pour. So this is a canvas I've used in the past and I've just prepared it again by putting a nice layer of gesso on the front and I've put a really generous layer of white paint on the back because what I don't want is for the darned canvas to curl up again. So I'm hoping by wetting the back as well as the front, um, as everyone's been advising me, that hopefully that is going to work and I'm not going to end up with a big mess, but we'll see. So what I want is a, a separation line between my two colours um, that will represent the, the foam at the edge of the beach. So I'm just going to put a thin line of white down there. And then, whoa, let's give my colours a little shimmer. And then that seems to be slightly narrower, but I'm going to move the paint anyway. So I now want to try and dirty pour on this side of the white line for what will be my beach. Looks good. That looks very good actually, I'm liking that a lot. Let me see if I can just scrape all that goodness out, get all those bits of colour. Nice. Okay. So that's my beach. It's not quite come up to my white line in places, but I think it'll be fine. Probably need a bit more white there. 
where I've gone over the white line and a bit here where it's bleeding through okay so let's now do the same now this one looks quite different um, the metallic paint is very very dominant in here I can see all the layers down the side of the cup but uh, let's see what happens when I pour it see if I can get a bit more mix oh yeah that looks okay it's not going to be all the same there's not much white yet I have to go back over this part I think with some of those white drips okay that'll be fine get a little stick make sure I get all that goodness out of there and I've got my straw at the ready because what I'm hoping is that I will be able to add a few extra lines of white in the in the blue here and um, do something um, a bit like uh, waves and just blow with the straw so let's see what happens so now I just need to I think I'm going to pour this way and this way first of all so I get coverage that way and then I can shift my colors so let's just start and a little bit here I'm just going to encourage it into these corners and where I've got some little gaps there okay so that's enough now if I tip back this other way encourage these little bits here to start to flow until I run off the edge more with the blue it's a stubborn bit just there okay oh that's really nice exactly the kind of look I'm looking for so now I'm going to tip so that the yellow comes off this side and it looks like my white separation line is working pretty good there to keep the colors apart so that I'm not going to get too much muddiness there between the two Oh, now that's nice. We have slightly tipped it asymmetrically. I do like that. Nature abhors a straight line after all. So now I'm going to always do best slightly tipping away from me. So if I turn this around, I'm going to just move it back in this direction. Try and cover up all these areas now. For some reason, they don't seem to have quite as much blue. But, oh, I've got plenty of blue coming here. I need to tip it a bit this way then. It's fine. It's just not as um, not as flowy as the other side was. I'll just get it off that corner. Wow! Look what's developed here. Now my plan originally was to have more blue and um, and less beach, but oops, but the beach is now looking really nice. Got some really interesting areas here and here. So now I'm a little bit torn because this bit isn't quite as nice as some of this. So I will tip it back. So I need to just spin it around again and try and get slightly more balanced. So I'm just going to tip it back this other way. Get a bit more of the blue on there, hopefully without losing too much of the interest in this beachy side. I think it will be good. This area here is kind of stretched out a little bit. So I'd like to tighten that up if I can. Keep this area and this area. And it looks to be doing pretty much what I like. So that's good. Okay, now that's an interesting shape too. I like that shape now. So, and this is interesting here. I've got beautiful kind of current lines and um, lines of like waves and things. And I was originally planning to add more white and blow it, but I'm not sure now whether I actually need to or whether it looks just good as it is. I'm afraid if I do start to blow, I may disrupt some of these really nice shapes that I've got especially in here it's really nice okay so let's see I'm just looking from the side to look at the thickness of my paints and they seem a little bit thinner there so I think I'm still going to tip 
this way a little bit, cover up some of this area. And again, this area is kind of a little bit smaller now, so that's good. Plus, the more I tip and get a little bit more off these edges, there's less paint on the canvas. And hopefully, I won't end up with too much warping because that always annoys me when I've got something that I really like and then it changes. Okay. So I'm just looking in the camera because somehow it gives me a better view than looking down from the top and seeing if I like that. I do like that. I like that very much. I'm still going to think about adding some white though and just giving it a little blow in if I do it in this corner and I don't like it. Maybe I can change my mind, so I'll just spin round and blow here and see what happens. Yeah, it looks nice. Okay, I'll just do some tiny, tiny little bits. In fact, I think I'll try and add just a kind of a drop at a time with my stick and see if I can make that work. Okay, yes, I'm liking it. I was a bit apprehensive after I liked it so much to then go and add in white and spoil it, but I think it's going to look good. A little spot there. Doesn't need too much. spot. And also I think I'm going to turn around and see if I, what will happen if I blow in this opposite direction. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe it's going to look better if I leave this as it is and blow out into the blue. Yeah, I think so because it's more likely that there'd be these kind of eddies in the blue, isn't there, than there would be in the white. In the yellow, rather. So let me add another drop. Let's do it somewhere here. Tiny drop. I think as I blow also, I'm highlighting the white which is underneath the blue. So what I'm blowing is not just the, the little spot of white that I'm adding. It's highlighting the white that's um, heavier and is underneath the blue anyway. It maybe needs just one here, right on the edge there, a little bit. Okay, what do I think? I think I love it. I think I love it very, very much. Okay, so let me just center that back in the picture for you after I've moved it around. Now what I am thinking is I would like to torch this side and maybe not so much here because I don't want um, spotty action here. I actually want the, the flow of the blue, like the water. So I'm hoping, again, I'm gonna turn it around. And what I want to do if I torch in this direction, hopefully I'll just be able to torch this area and not the blue that's in front of me. My torch is a bit fierce, it's on minimum, but let's see what happens.
Nearly caught it on fire, started a bubble. Actually, not much happened at all. You zoom in just a little bit, you can get a slightly more in-depth picture. So, torching didn't really bring out much detail here. There was already a lot of detail, a lot of little interesting sections of cells. And I love the way it all seems to be flowing and things. And it's just um, one painting where the flow of the colours has been more important than the creating of the interest with the cells. So I really love the way the, the white and the, the different colours, especially the metallic blue, absolutely beautiful in all of these, um, these waves and the action here from coming off the coming off the land. I've even got some little spots of blue coming through here and that creates a nice little areas too. So I don't need to do anything more with this. It's absolutely perfect, just what I wanted. So I'm going to bring the camera down and show you some of these details now. So here we go. Let's zoom in and look at some of these details. Especially love the areas where the... Oh, I need to keep the camera back a little bit. Don't I? It's creating a shadow. love the areas where the, the blue you're just coming out into the sea like this and the areas here where it's just flowing and it's like shimmering and greens and whites and blues absolutely lovely together really really nice and then when you come onto the land again there's lots more areas of detail you know things like well i don't know how you would describe them but certainly really really lovely really great here in the land and then as you come out here lots more areas where the blue comes out to the sea and creates all these wonderful, wonderful areas of interest. So, I'll zoom back out. Hope I'm going to keep my fingers crossed um, that this panel isn't going to give me any trouble after I did try to look after it so hard. And I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's dry. And fingers crossed, it will still look the same. So here it is now, finished, all varnished, glossed and uh, looking lovely. The, some of the details here have stayed and um, where the white is blown on top of the, the mag, uh, metallic paints, wow, some of these details here are absolutely fabulous. If I can zoom in, I don't know if you'll be able to see the sparkle or not in the camera, but it's looking really nice. The metallic details in the, in the sea here and here, here, really, really lovely. I couldn't have asked for a better result, I think, with this one. And the way the blue is just coming through here, it really is even better than I hoped it might be. So thank you very much for looking. Thank you very much for following along while I did a little bit of painting in this one. And I hope you'll give something similar a try. See you soon on the channel. Subscribe if you haven't done already. And then pop over to the Acrylic Pouring Store. Uh, link in the comments below where you can buy all your supplies. See you soon.